because we are believers of your word. We are not doubters, we are believers. Because you say where two or three gather in your name, then you are in the midst of us. So we know you are here. And we, we know that we are surrounded by innumerable number of angels. They hear with their pens ready to write down all our heart desires, all our petitions, and bring them up to you for you to action them. So, Father, I pray that every need represented this morning will be met. That you, O oh God, that we will be encouraged, we will be energized, we will be renewed, O oh God, and strengthened so that we will be able, O oh God, to quench every fairy that of the enemy, so that we will be able, O oh God, to win the battle of life. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let every believer say, Amen. Amen. Praise God. I welcome all of you uh, to Faith Life Harrogate. And Faith Life Center Ministries is where we gather to grow and go. Amen? We are one church in three locations. Fed Life Manchester, Fed Life Preston, and Fed Life Harrogate. It's where fresh bread is being served. It's where we you know, devour the living man from heaven. Amen? So we're going to open the scriptures this morning, and I would encourage you to open the Bible, your Bibles with me. Amen? Because the Bible tells us, Jesus said to us in Matthew 4.4, 4, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. Amen? Amen. Praise God. And as we, uh, throughout uh, last month, until the end of the year, we're going what we call spiritual growth track. We are running on this track called spiritual, spiritual growth track. And then we started with the, how do you, end, before you can grow spiritually, how, how can you get into it? And with the first topic we discussed was the new, the new birth experience. Where Jesus said to us, you know, it was a mystery to people who had him first when he said it. In John chapter 1, uh, chapter 3, if you read the whole account, when Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and was trying to praise him for all the amazing work, all the miraculous things that he was doing. But Jesus went straight to verse 3 of that John 3. He said, except a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And then he began to explain what that means to be born again. And he said that that which is born, that which is born of spirit is spirit. And if you look at that verse, you know, very clearly we see that the capital S and small s. So he said that which is born of spirit is spirit. And that which is born of flesh is flesh. You know, and even in John, uh, John's Gospel, chapter, uh, chapter 1, where I say that, you know, if we could just look at that briefly. Uh, John's Gospel, chapter, chapter 1. From verse 12. And it says, But as many as received him, Wow. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. Verse 33, sorry, 13 is so important for us. Who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but 
of God. Amen. Some translations say that as many that receive him, to them he gave what? Power. Some say to them he gave right. Some, another uh, version said to them he gave what? Authority to become the children of God. And I know if you can just go through the memory lane, just I give you a second to do that. You can remember the first time that you gave your heart to Jesus. The first, the first time you say yes to Jesus, to King Jesus. I remember what my life used to be was a rough life of drinking, party, you know, and chasing girls. And then to the 3rd of June, 1989, I said yes to Jesus. And all of a sudden, my life was transformed. I was able to do what I couldn't do prior to that. Yes, yeah, so Jesus, and the word of God is saying, Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And we had to explain it. John's gospel, that John's gospel chapter 3, from verse 3, Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I said to you, unless one is born, Again, he cannot. He cannot. This is so important. He cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus, verse 4, said to him, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly I say to you, he broke, it, he broke it down to, to Nicodemus. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water. In other words, except one is born of a woman and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So Jesus saying, being born again is not for spirits. Demons cannot be saved. He said, except you are born of water and the Spirit. We are born when our moms were pregnant of us and the water broke and she gave birth to, they gave birth to us. There must be a, time, a point in your life that you say, Jesus, come into my heart. And you meant it. And it happened and you experience peace that Bible describes as peace unspeakable and full of glory. You experience joy, uncontainable, unexplainable joy that makes you you fall in love with Jesus and with God and you say no to the world and yes to Jesus and you began to pursue the things of God. So after, the, after we discussed the new birth experience, we went into the things, what are the things that shows the evidence that we are born again, evidence that we are children of God. So we discuss, uh, you know, what, what happens when a, a mom gives birth to a child. The child signifies I'm healthy by the first thing, crying. The second thing is lack unto mom's milk. I want it. I witness it in the maternity word. The first thing that they, you know, they, 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 eat, they eat all night, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they try to keep mom awake. And that's what I did. And that's what that's the same thing you did. As soon as you got born of the Bible, the Bible that you despise, you hated, you didn't want to hear anything. Oh, 
I'll say, God, why I didn't know you before this time? We have to learn here in the in the in the, uh, in the in the church this morning. I remember a guy who was having challenge in uh, in France until I gave him my number. He couldn't sleep in the night. He was having problems, and then I ran to him, and then we start discussing, and I led him to Christ. He had peace. He slept. And then one day I was speaking to him, he said, Then where will I start reading? I said, uh, John's Gospel. I made him say, I would have said to him, Just remember to you know, read at least one or two. He stayed awake, read John's Gospel from beginning to the end. Amen. Amen. These are one of the evidences that we are born again. You desire the sincere milk of God's word so that we will grow thereby. There is hunger in your spirit. To feed on the word. Amen. And then last Sunday, Pastor Linda took us to identity. One of the things that happens in this spiritual growth track, you know who you are and who you are. Because one of the reasons Jesus came, and which is the most important reason. It's not necessarily just to save us from our sins. It's one of it. But the most important reason why he came was to reveal the Father to us. And to reveal you to you, to reveal ourselves to us. Because the Bible said that man all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. What that means, not only that we have fallen short of God's standard of righteousness, but we have fallen short of who we are. We are gods, created in God's image. So he came, not only to forgive us, because he said, they shall name him what? Jesus, and he shall save his people from what? Sin. He's done that. But also to reveal the Father to us and to reveal to us who we are. So Linda spent, Pastor Linda spent last Sunday explaining to us the importance of identity because it's a game changer. When you know who you are, nothing faces you. The pressures of life will not, will not cause you to compromise. You will never compromise. Before I became saved, oh my God, I was so shy, I couldn't speak before people, I couldn't even stand my legs, you know, doing some, you know, dance, break dance. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but when God got hold of me, he began to take all those out. I used to be people pleaser. Approval addiction. But God said, you are mine. Amen. When you have me, you have it all. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And then brethren, I congratulate each and every one of us here who is born again. You are the child of the Most High God. When you know you are the son of the Most High God, you wouldn't want to take anything to get you high. Because you be on the, the, the you, you are the God, you are the son of the Most High. Amen? So you're already as high as you can ever be. Glory to God. This is what we now get drunk from, on the word of God. Amen? Because when we're filled with the word of God, we'll be led by the spirit of God. It is what you are filled with, you will be led by. I remember those days I drink those alcohol and I start and you know, 
And one thing so obvious is that if somebody is drunk, you will know he's drunk. Because the, the, the person's movement is different. The person's tone of voice is different. <coughs> and the same thing happened to us. <coughs> when you are filled with the word of God, when you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, your language, your speech change. <coughs> Praise God. It changes. And that's why the people say, where has these people learned letters? Is that any word for me to do? No, it's just looking. <coughs> you know, when the, when the people, the disciples of Jesus went about doing miracles, and, and they said, wow, we know these people. They're different. Their language is different. Where have they learned letter and this wisdom? And the people testify because they've been with Jesus. Amen? Amen. So, identity. We know who we are <coughs> in Christ. It's so important. Thank you so much. <coughs> Excuse me. We knowing who we are in Christ is a game changer. Amen? Amen. Because it makes you and empowers you to overcome peer pressure. Mm -hmm. Trying to please people. Trying to fear people. There is only one person to fear. If you if we fear people, we will be fearful all our lives. But if we fear God and honor God and submit to Him, we will be fearless. Amen? Amen. And it gives us confidence to operate in who God has made us to be. It makes us to know our worth. Our worth. And I know that you know as children of God our word is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Our word is J E S U S, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Remember those a cappella songs we used to sing those days? If I have trouble and I don't know what to say, what to do, just dial that number. J E S U S. If I have a problem, I don't know what to do. Just remember that you have a father in heaven. Yeah. Just die that number. And I can testify to you as a person who have experienced countless God's deliverance and miracles. And I know so so are you. You have experienced so much God's love, so much God's touch, so much revelation. I congratulate you for being born again, for being a child of God. We are the top 5% in the world who have this eternal wisdom, this freedom, this peace that money cannot buy. Amen? Amen? If you read Isaiah 55, it talks about this. Amen? Amen? The Bible tells us that whosoever and whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. Amen. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. I think it's first uh, first John 5 4. Amen. 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 Whosoever or whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. We are born of God. We are the children of the Most High God. 
We are not ordinary people. We are supernatural beings. Amen. And you remember, we reminded you on this spiritual uh, growth track that we are what? Spirit. We are spirit. Amen. And we possess what? We possess a soul and we live what? In a physical body. Amen. The real us is down here. Our spirit and soul is within our God. Jesus said that when we become born again, that they will come and live within us. Amen. Glory to God. So we are spirit, we possess a soul, and we live in a physical body. This physical body is not really who we are. That's why when we are dead or slave, you don't know what is happening to this body. But sometimes we are having interaction in the spirit. Until the spirit comes back and we wake up. That's why the Bible says the body without the spirit is what? Dead. Amen? So the real us, really, whenever you were making, trying to make decision of who to go into business relationship with or any form of relationship with, you don't focus on this. You focus on God to reveal to you who the person is on the inside. Because the person inside is the person you are really engaging with, not this. Yet yeah, this could tick all the boxes, but here is flawed. Praise God. So this morning, all that was introduction. So this morning we're going to look at holistic biblical prosperity. Amen. Praise God. And let's look at First uh, John. Sorry, Third John two. And he said, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Amen. Beloved. Who else is called beloved in the Bible? John. John the Beloved. And Jesus. He said, We are accepted in what? In the beloved, God sees his son Jesus Christ as the beloved. And the same address, and God addresses you and me as his beloved. Amen. Glory to God. That's the beginning of prosperity. Amen. Acceptance by your by the living God, by our daddy, Abba Father in heaven. That's the beginning of prosperity. Because man lost that in the Garden of Eden through the sin of Adam and Eve. Man entered into poverty and lostness and eternal damnation and separation from God and from divine wealth. We lost all that. But Jesus came and restored it back. Better than it was before we lost it. Glory to God. Amen. So here, this is the beginning of prosperity. Holistic, biblical prosperity. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in what? All things. Few things. Some things. Amen. He said that I pray that you may what? Prosper what? In all things. Can we say all things? All things. It is our Father's desire that we will prosper in all things. And look at here, even in, that, in, in this verse of the scripture. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be what? Be in health. Just as your soul prospers. Beloved. You are beloved. 
I am beloved. Amen. 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 So he wants us, God wants us to prosper in all things, not in few things, not in some things. And he wants us to prosper in what? Spirit, soul, and body. Glory to God. Can we say, God wants me to prosper? God wants me to prosper. Spirit, Spirit soul, soul, and body. And body. Amen. He wants us to prosper in three dimensions of man. We are spirit, we possess a soul, and we live in a body. Our soul comp comprises our will, our mind, and our emotion, and intellect. And our soul grows based on whatever information you give it. That's why Romans 12 tells us to renew our mind. It's talking about our soulish mind. It's not talking about spiritual mind. Our spiritual mind is perfect. Praise God. Three persons, three personalities. So our spirit, the only thing that our spirit man feeds on is this, the word of God. That's why Jesus said, you remember Matthew 4, 4? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So he was referring to the spirit man. Only feeds the word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Like, I'm speaking now, it's not Benny speaking. Yes, Benny is speaking physically. He can see me, but it's God speaking through me because this is not my words. And this word that I'm speaking is no less powerful as God speaking the same thing. The word of God in your mouth is as powerful as the word of God in his mouth. It, the word of God doesn't change because it's coming, it's no less powerful because it's coming from your mouth. As long as you're born again and you're speaking the word of God, it's as potent as God speaking. Amen? Amen. That's why the early Christians who believe it, and some men of God today who believe the word, they speak it and it comes to pass. Amen? Because the word of God is so powerful. Beloved, I, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. So the prerequisite of we prospering in all things is our soul being prospered. And in verse 2, there's, sorry. Oh, sorry, you Yeah, I wanted to read that. Thank you. That, Rom, that Romans uh, 12, 2. Then he said that, he said that, and do not be conformed to this word, but be ye renewed by what? Be you renewed. Oh, thank you. And do not be conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Once we become born again, we spend the rest of our life renewing our mind. And the mind is talking about that is our soulish mind. Yeah? Because once our soulish mind knows the will, the, 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 what the Word of God says, and our spirit mind is fed and strong, it will instruct our soul what to do, and our soul will instruct our body, yeah, what to do. If we are strong spiritually, we will be strong mentally. If we are strong mentally, our body will be active doing the will of God. It's like, how will our physical body be strong? It's by eating, isn't it? Feeding. If we just feed only once or twice a week, what do you think will happen to our body? Weak, fragile, you know, uh, prone to all form of uh, sickness. The same way, if we are not feeding our spirit man, we are weak 
then we'll be led by our five senses and our mind. That's why there are so many mental health issues. Because people are not feeling, they are feeling their soul with bad news. So the only food that our soulish uh, person eats is information. If you feed it, the, the word of God will experience it prosperity. If you feed it with all the bad news we're hearing on news and television and all that, will be, will, that, that person will be unstable, will be fearful, will be scared. Amen? But thank God that we have the word of God. And do you know something pretty about the word of God? It's not just W or R T. The word of God is our best friend. He's our bridegroom. He's our brother. He's our husband. He's our friend. And his name is what? Jesus. First John, sorry, John chapter 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was what? God. So whenever you hear the word of God, it's a person. Amen? That's why it said, heaven and earth shall pass away, and my word will not pass away. Because God's word is God himself. Glory to God. He cannot separate God from his word. Amen? Amen? So prosperity in Greek can be interpreted to mean help along the way of a prosperous journey. Once we became born again, God is always there. He's so faithful. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen? He said, ask, it shall be given you. Seek, you shall find. Knock, the door shall be opened unto you. He said, before you ask, I will answer. Amen? Amen. And that's what I saw my mom, you know, did. And my, and, and my wife, before the child cried. Yeah, before the child comes. And the same thing, glory to God. Before we ask God, He answer us. Amen? So, biblical prosperity is holistic and interconnected, and it, can, it, and it involves the well-being of the whole man, his spirit, his soul, and body. This means we must experience it spiritually, mentally, biologi bi uh, biologically, and socially. Holistic prosperity brings peace, or shalom in Hebrew, which means Nothing missing, nothing broken. Praise God. To, uh, to prosper is to succeed in everything we do. Amen. God wants us to prosper in everything we do. And we know the key to success is knowing the basic things and doing it consistently. Isn't it? If you want, if you want to be promoted at work, learn the basic thing. Your job specification, know it. Report to work on time. Be diligent. You'll be promoted. The same thing with the word of God. If we learn the basic thing and do it consistently, we will experience success. Amen. Mm -hmm. I read the same scripture in Amplified. He said, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in every way and that your body may keep well. Say, to, say, say after me, my body, I command you in the name of Jesus to keep well. Amen. Glory to God. Even as I know, your soul keeps well and prospers. I speak to your soul to prosper. I speak the peace of God upon every soul here in the name of Jesus. No more fear. No more worries. 
No more anxieties in the name of Jesus. Praise God. <coughs> because the Bible says he will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is there on him. Our mind will continually stay on God. No matter what is happening, no matter the changes out there, no matter the chaos out there, we know whom we believe. Amen. And TPT says, the same uh, scripture, Third John 2, Beloved friend, I pray that you are prospering in every way and that you continually enjoy good health, glory, just as your soul is prospering. Father, I thank you for your children that they will continually experience good health. Amen. Their body is, oh God, our body is your temple. We will experience your goodness. We believe your word that your goodness will continually follow us in the name of Jesus. I speak health. I speak prosperity over your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Prosperity is more than money. It encompasses the entire scope and spectrum of our lives. Let's look at uh, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Glory to God. I can, it's easy to open it from with your heart, isn't it? But there is the good reason why I try to open it. Even I have it in my outline. The importance of it is that when you are, the, the way we feed our spirit, as you open the Bible and you're reading it, and you're meditating on it, you're feeding your spirit. It is more powerful and more potent than trying to remember it. Because if you remember the bre what was breakfast you had yesterday, that won't fill you up today. If you remember the lunch you had last week, <laughs> that will not feed you for today. So it doesn't matter whether it's the same verse, whether you've read it a thousand times, when you open it and you're reading it, reading it you're feeding your spirit. Amen. 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 Glory to God. I mean, it doesn't make well, human sense, but it, make, it makes spiritual sense. Amen. Amen. So, okay, uh, verse 3 says, we can read it there. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. My God. Bless be God. We are blessed people. Amen. Bless God. Bless people. Amen. Amen. Bless be God and, and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. My brothers and sisters, I declare to you that the greatest blessing is spiritual blessing. Mm -hmm. Everything that you see above the ground is from the ground. Everything. God said, the earth bring forth and it bring. Mm -hmm. The same way all the goodness that this earth, as we know it, will experience is deposited in you and in me. Every good thing you see on this earth come from who? 
from you and me. Everything. All the buildings, the internet, the everything. God saw it in human beings. Yeah, like everything is on the earth. The, the diamond, the uh, gold, the oil, everything above the ground is from the ground. So the same way God saw every spiritual blessing into you and me. So this world can be better if me and you believe the scripture and engage in it. The Bible said the 12 disciples turned the world upside down. They believed the scriptures. To the point, even, uh, even Peter was doing shadow ministry. His shadow was healing the sick, raising the dead. His shadow. Amen. Amen. Sorry, they raised the dead. They, they raised many dead. But Peter in particular, his shadow was healing the sick. Handkerchief. They said, I can cheat and, and, and they touch a sick person and they got healed because they know who they are and whose they are. The most important, knowing whose we are and who we are, that all the spiritual blessings is in us. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 4 18 that the things that are unseen are what? Are eternal. But the things that are not seen are temporal. We do not look at the things that are seen because they are temporal. But the things that are unseen are eternal. Yeah. Spiritual things, you cannot see them. But that's where the real stuff is. So we are the real deal. Amen. We are the people that God is going to use to bring good. That is using. So we are the people that God is using to bring good on earth. Amen. Amen. Say, I like Prosperity. prosperity. Amen. Amen. And that prosperity begins with relationship with God. By being born again. That is the beginning of unlocking God's blessings in our lives, in our family lives, in our community, and people around us. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. TPT of the same uh, uh, translation says, every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm has already been lavished upon us as a love gift from our wonderful heavenly Father. The Father of our Lord Jesus. All because he sees us wrapped into Christ. This is why we celebrate him with all our Hearts, glory to God. What a mighty God. Awesome, awesome God. Every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm has already been lavished upon you and me as a love gift from our wonderful heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus, all because He sees us wrapped into Christ. That's why the book of Colossians tells us there is a mystery. Colossians 1 to 7, there is a mystery. And this mystery is Christ in you, Christ in me, the hope of glory. That's what makes us Christians. That's what prospers us. Christ in us. We are of different species. We are of a dif of different nation. We belong to a, a, a glorious nation called Christians. Mm -hmm. Mm. We are called of Christ. Mm -hmm. We are the bride of Christ. Mm -hmm. He wants the best for us. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Let's look at Second uh, Second Peter, chapter one, two to four.
Awesome. Thank you. He said, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Glory to God. We need grace to be able to run the race of life. We need God's grace. Without God's grace, it will be possible to run the, the race of life because we have an enemy who always accusing us, who always making us to speak ill of ourselves, who always make us weak through us. He tell us you're to tell ourselves, you're not good enough. You can't make it. Look at the price of everything is going on. How can you survive? How can you? No. We shut down such negative voices in the name of Jesus. Because we can make it. Because we are children of God. Because the Bible tells us that whatsoever and whosoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even what? Our, Our faith. faith. Amen. <clears throat> Remember, he said, whosoever, we are born of God. Yes. And because of that, we overcome anything the world throws at us. Amen. Whether sickness, whether uh, uh, farming, whether shortages of any kind, we overcome it. Remember, this our daddy sustained his children in, in the wilderness for 40 years wearing the same shoe, the same clothes. And they didn't wear out. <laughs> he controls the element. Amen. Depreciation or decay is caused by sin. Where there is no sin, there is no depreciation and there is no decay. I mean, he fed his children with man, the same fruit, for 40 years. And they weren't bored of it. And he was giving them balanced, ba balanced diet was in that man. <laughs> Glory to God. He divided the Red Sea. He shot the mouth of lions. He stopped the flame of fire. The three beautiful children. There is nothing the our God cannot do. He fed a prophet with a bird. The widow woman it multiplies her oil. And Linda and I, a few years ago, with three children, got stuck in one bedroom flat in London. No way. We didn't know what to do. Until one day I had, I had God. He said, have you called upon me? Have you asked me to help? I'm your husband. Jesus said, I'm your husband. I can provide for you. And I shared the revelation with my wife. It happened in August. And God told me what to do. Pack up the business that is no longer working. Go and look for a job. I went for three job interviews and I got two. Within two or three or, or, or three weeks after he told me that, does up my CV that I haven't applied for a job for nearly four or five years because I was running my own business. And then I said, I, I, those two jobs, I said, oh, which one to choose? One was a thousand pounds and one hundred more. I said, which one would I pick? Because if I've gone by my natural senses, I would have chosen the one with one thousand, one hundred pounds more. This is happening in uh, uh, 2005, so uh, 17 years ago. So a thousand, one hundred pounds, a lot of money there. Mm -hmm. But I thank God I didn't choose one, that one. God said, no, choose the, the lower one, and I chose that. 
five months we are in Harrogate. God miraculously provided for us deposits for the house. I was our first time buying buy the house. And we moved from London from one bedroom flat. In London, not one bedroom flat in Harrogate. Over there is a box, box room with three children. And a lot of debt. No, no way out. Because I will help you. And miraculously, five months later, we are here in Harrogate, bought our own house. Glory to God. So, whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. It was later I realized that the one that was a thousand one hundred pounds more was six months probation. The one that I chose was three months. And the, the bank called on the fifth month and called the personnel. Is very a permanent start. They say yes, they are proof of my, my mortgage. What of if I had chosen the one with one thousand pounds? Maybe my still, you know, a bit in London suffering. And we say, oh, it doesn't work. Oh, this prayer, because we are because we are not listening. God is speaking all the time. Jesus said to us, My sheep hear my voice. John, John 10 27. So if we hear what God says and do it, there is always force. There's always power behind it. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. Whatsoever. Whatever idea I give you, that idea, if you're wrong with it, it will not only make you a living, it will make you a fortune. And it will help you to help other people. What was what was whatsoever that come from God to Jesus, to the blind person? He said, spit on the on the sand. Spit on the sand and mix it and rub his eyes. But because it was from God, what happened to the blind man? He saw. He went, washed, washed the, uh, the sand and the spirit. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense whatsoever. It doesn't make human sense whatsoever. That the blind person, he, he rubbed his spirit. Mix it with sand and rub. You know, do you want it to be blinder? If there is any word like it, come on, blinder. But he kept seeing. <laughs> Glory to God. God's way doesn't make you know logical human sense, but he makes spiritual sense. Mm -hmm. Amen. Glory to God. Because we live by faith and not by sight. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. So in rounding up. In summary, so when we're talking about uh, holistic biblical prosperity, we are talking about prosperity that includes success in every realm of life. Being born again, filled with the Spirit, making disciples, hungry for the Word of God, unbroken relationship with God. These are prosperity. Filled with the Word and Spirit. Prayerful, effective soul winning. This is biblical prosperity. It, a, a prosperous soul, sorry, a prosperous soul, healthy will, healthy mind and emotion, alignment with the will of God, sound mind, stability in your in your emotions. Glory to God. Glory to God. We thank God for the new heaven and new earth. You know, where there is no, <laughs> no cold, no flu. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Glory to God. When we have our spiritual body. Glory to God. Awesome. So, st stability in our emotion, physical, uh, divine health, divine healing, divine protection, fearless, fear free. And freedom from fear. Amen. Awesome. Awesome. These are all ours. Financial prosperity. Abundantly prosperous. That's what the Bible tells us. 
He said that God will make us abundantly prosperous. That's Deuteronomy uh, 30 verse 9, if, if you're taking note. Bills paid on time, freedom from death, success in all endeavor, love in your family, devotion in marriage, obedient and well-behaved children, healthy relationships, trustworthy friends, God-fearing leaders, God-fearing nation, general support for Israel. These are, these are uh, holistic biblical prosperity. Amen. Glory to God. So let's rise on our feet and just, you know, thank God. Let's thank God for His Word that has come forth. He will not return unto Him for it. There is a reason why God is speaking to us all these things this morning. Oh, we give you praise. We give you glory, Lord. Thank you, Father. You are trustworthy. You are trustworthy. There is none like you, God. We bless you, Father. We thank you for your word that has come forth. It will not return to you, Lord. It will accomplish every purpose whereby you have uttered this word. For your word's sake, for you spoke and it was done. You commanded and it stood fast. So, Father, we commend, O oh God, we commit ourselves to you. May you cause us to grow in grace through the knowledge of you and your son, Jesus Christ. That we may not be troubled by the storms of life. That we will fix our eyes on you alone. Because you who have promised is faithful that you will never leave us nor forsake us. So we cast our cares before you will refuse to carry these cares. So we cast them on you. Be glorified and exalted. Have your way. In Jesus' name we pray.